What's up guys? This is Automotive Anonymous and if you're new to my channel, I do car reviews, zero to six season of the cool stuff. Today we have a 2023 Mazda CX-9, generously borrowed by Goody Mazda in Southern Idaho. So I'll link them below if you're interested because it's a couple thousand under MSRP. Otherwise, we're gonna do a walk around review, go through the ins and the outs, initial driving impressions, stay tuned till the end for the zero to 60 with the GPS. And final thoughts to decide if this vehicle is worth your time and money. And while you're at it, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Tell me more of what you want to see and show your support for the channel if you don't mind. Otherwise, we're going to get right into it. These are pretty cool. The CX-9 is in the last year of its second generation. This one started in 2016. And United States Mazda sells around 30,000 of these a year. They're a really good option for a three-row SUV and this is the touring so it's the first of the five trim levels that means MSRP with only a few little extra goodies it's only about 40 grand but then this one's somewhere around 38,000 it's all-wheel drive it's in this beautiful snowflaked white pearl which is a really good color a lot of the other vehicles on the dealer right now look really dirty but this snowflaked white shines and you really don't see a whole lot of dirt coming from it it's got the 2.5 liter turbo engine sky active g baby i'll show you that in just a little bit makes 250 horse 310 torque these actually get about 20 city 26 highway so with a 19 and a half gallon tank you're looking at 500 miles of road tripping baby they weigh about 4400 pounds they can tow about 3500 pounds so it weighs about as much as a three row subaru ascent but it can't quite tow as much as the 5000 pound capacity as one of those puppies it's about 16 and a half feet long, six and a half feet wide, and five and two thirds a foot tall. So it's a pretty decent size, but it's not too big for being a three row SUV that you can park it pretty easily and it can do really well around town, especially with kind of the sporty handling that Mazda offers. It has really good looking wheels. They are an 18 inch. It's a 255, 60, 18. So you get a lot of sidewall on those all season tires. And then you get a spare wheel in the back. This is a top safety pick plus. I do physical therapy. I work in nursing homes, home health, stuff like that. So I see a lot of people who have been in car accidents and when you're considering a vehicle, you really do want something that is safe. This has all the adaptive cruise control features, blind spot, lane keep assist, lane departure, warning, all of those sort of things. Well, let's get inside out of the wind and see what else the CX-9 has to offer. On the door panel, we get some really nice appealing materials to look at. The armrest is a soft touch, looks pretty good. You do have the handle, which I like on Mazdas. Kind of like a piano black with a chrome line around the mirror and window options. And then an unnamed speaker with the bottle holder and enough room for a whole pack of Twizzlers and maybe a little bit more. Nothing on the door sill, it's just the plastic line. You have floor mats, but they're not installed yet on this one rubberized pedals, gas door release, hood release, extra options up here, windshield wiper stock, and then you got the power way adjustments for these really nice leather seats, and Mazda's reminding you that you have an airbag right there. Let's hop inside and fire it up. Push button start, the leather wrapped wheel looks really good. I'd love if it was heated, but it's not on this model. Gauges are pretty timeless for Mazda. They look really good. And then up top, we have the 10 inch diagonal digital display, which let's see if this one's a touch screen. It is not on this model, but what you do have is physical buttons. You have the heated seats, which I basically leave those on year round. I really like that Mazda hasn't gone to digital buttons, but they have the physical tactile ones. You have a little bit of storage for your phone for more snacks. It's actually a pretty good space. And then that same theme from the door follows around the shifter you could drop it down to manual mode and bump it forward or back with that six speed automatic you do have a sport mode which firms up the shifts and then you got the electronic parking brake auto vehicle hold music home navigation the back button and you got the scrolly dial that controls everything up here it's a really simple system to use you can see from my point of view it doesn't interfere with your visibility. So kudos to Mazda for keeping you safe. Then you have the power button. If you hold that, you can actually turn off the screen. But I'll show you what the reverse camera looks like. It's actually pretty good. 
You turn the wheel though and those lines do not move. Two cup holders, they're low, so they should be out of the way unless you have a big boy sippy cup, something that's really tall. And then you have the two-way lift console, two USBs, and that's where you'd put the SD memory card sort of thing for the navigation. But otherwise, not too bad. Up here, you have your garage door controls and your other settings for the dimming mirrors. We have a sunglass holder, a physical sunshade to move, and then you could tilt or you could slide. It's not a huge sunroof on this one, but something's better than nothing, and it does let in some nice natural light. Let's turn off the car, hop to the middle row. To the back door panel. The theme should look pretty familiar. You have nice soft touch materials. The armrest isn't exceptionally wide, but that's okay, because you can still get a pretty good fitting on it, how the door pocket panel kind of curves in and then the handle right there. Same piano black sort of finish. And another nice long door pocket that bellows out. Nothing on the door sill. And these seats, these leather seats all around look really nice. Let's step in and see how we fit. At 5 foot 11, I fit really good. I have a couple inches in front of my knees, especially with this cutout here. Mazda really knows how to make the space useful for its occupants. You have the double map pocket, so you can tell those chauffeuring you where you want to go. Otherwise, you have climate controls back here and a couple of cup holders, which is nice. Same thing on the other seat, and then the two seats back here. We're gonna, we could walk through the center if we were small enough, but I'm actually gonna slide this forward a little bit to where I need to be to sit comfortably in the second row. And then I'll show you the other way to get in the back. You could drop the backrest like this, or we're just gonna use this handle, slide it forward. Getting into the back, you'll notice not a lot of extras back here on this base touring model, but we do have the cup holders on both sides. And looks like the front passenger can recline pretty decently. But otherwise, sing back here, my head does rub the ceiling. I wouldn't be comfortable back here for a long drive, but it would be doable for a short time around town, or if you had shorter legs or no legs, or you were a child. You're not gonna have too much trouble back here. It does do an okay job, but let's get out of here, show you the back. I'm gonna open the hatch with the button that's just under the Mazda emblem and then you also have a uh, pin code right there that you can set to get into the vehicle without having the key otherwise you can open the hatch by using the button that's on the left of the steering wheel or by the button on the remote so you have three options otherwise back here we have about 14 cubic feet of room behind the third seat if you drop them you have in the mid upper 30s and then if you drop that you have 71 behind the driver and front passenger so it's a little bit smaller than other three row SUVs but it's not too bad for fitting six people on this specific model. Back here you have bag clips that can fold out, mesh pocket behind the wheel wells, and then a 12 volt on the passenger side. If we lift up here, we have a little bit of storage. And then if we lift up even further, you get the temporary spare tire with enough room in the center of the donut that you could fit some goodies like a blanket, a purse, maybe a big bag of Lay's potato chips or whatever else you can think of. Leave it in the comments below. Otherwise, we're gonna use the power lift to drop it. The back passenger side, the door panel, looks really familiar. You got the same double map pocket, so either middle row passenger could be the designated backseat driver. And those seats look really good. This one, of course, drops the same way. There we go. They do feel kind of heavy, but they're not that bad to move for what they are. And then if you're riding shotgun, you get a really nice area to sit. You again get the handle and a nice big door pocket that has a bottle holder angled out towards you. You do have 10-way power adjustments on the seats, airbag reminder right there, and an extra 12 volt because you don't get one in the glove box but it is pretty deep. Let's come around to the front. 
and pop the hood on this Turbo CX-9. All right, with regular gasoline, 87, you get 227 horse. If you put 91 premium, you should get about 250 horse and 310 pound-feet of torque. Mazda knows how to make a clean engine bay. You get some induction through the grill, the air filter, through all the Spinny Boy Turbo on the back side that you can just barely see over there. And then it goes through. They have a nice engine cover up top reminding you that you're driving a Skyactiv-G baby with the turbo. And then 5W30 full synthetic oil in the dipstick right there. You have the battery with the positive terminal, negative terminal, brake fluid reservoir, windshield washer reservoir. And then the serpentine belt with the alternator right there on the passenger side. So it's pretty easy to see everything and get to. These are really good, really reliable engines. Let's drop the hood, take it for a drive. And time to teleport inside, see what our initial driving impressions are. And then what does this do? Zero to 60. Initial driving impressions of the CX-9 are that it's a really comfortable, really smooth ride. I like it a lot. Visibility, being a Mazda, and being one of the items of value for those engineers, is really good. It's a top safety pick plus again, so you know you're driving something safe that's going to look after you and your family as you look after it. The wheel feels comfortable. Like I mentioned, I love heated steering wheels, but for not being heated, I can't complain. I really like it. It's the right thickness. Armrest comfort is just fine too. It's right where it needs to be, I'd say for the average sized arm. And then that split design on the console, it's a little bit hard, but overall it does a really good job of being comfortable. And I think the materials are gonna last really well and for a long time. When you're driving, it's easy to use the scrolly dial and go through the options that you have. Having Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is really nice too. But everything's where you want to be. Everything's within reach and not too far away. Pretty quick to respond as well. Looking up, that sunroof again is a fantastic offering. I love panoramic sunroofs, but you're not even paying 40 grand for this, so you really can't complain too much. When it rides so smooth, great visibility with those mirrors. And let's show you the brakes. It's pretty linear input as far as changing your velocity with what you're giving the pedal. Let's maybe give it a little bit of gas too, see what that six speed does. Yeah, it downshifts and immediately builds boost and it just goes, it gets right up to speed. And those gauges are honestly so timeless on Mazdas. I'm glad they're not going with big digital display clusters and things like that. They're just keeping it simple. We have around a 10 mile per hour wind today and road and wind noise are not bad at all for the interior of the cabin. Speaker quality is pretty good. And with the wheelbase that this vehicle has, it feels really planted on the road with 8.8 .8 inches of ground clearance. You can do a whole lot of stuff. Having a turning, a full turning circle under 40 feet it feels really nimble on the road. It feels really dynamic. Like you can move out of the way of things. You can, you know, take it off the beaten path if you need to, to a certain extent with that all wheel drive system. Mazda's done a really good job making this just feel like a very homely interior. I'll give you another, maybe a half throttle acceleration. Let you hear what the engine sounds like before we get to our private road. Lots of low end torque on this with that turbo where the, the peak boost comes on early. I think if you were towing 3,500 pounds, which this is rated for, or you had to, uh, you know, weighted down with six people and maybe some gear on the roof, I think you would do really well. I live up at altitude and where I visit these dealers is up at a, a similar altitude. So vehicles are slower at altitude. They lose power. They can't breathe as well, kind of like an athlete or like if you drive up a mountain and you get out of your car, you can't breathe as well moving around because the oxygen's not as dense. The turbo on vehicles like this really help out and it just feels powerful without having to be very exerted going through the higher RPMs. 
kudos to Mazda for keeping a traditional six speed. I know a lot of other options are going to the CVTs and a lot of those are decent options, but there's something special about still having a six speed. Well, we're almost to our private road. Let's do our zero to 60. Zero to 60, we're gonna brake rev the six speed automatic. It is in sport mode. And then I'll verbalize the true zero to 60 and then the GPS graph to follow. The bottom left will show you what it's rated at. That's without the foot of rollout, keep in mind. Density altitude's about 2,400 feet. True altitude's about 4,000 feet. So we are down on power still about 4% even though this is a turbo engine. And then my private road is not a sticky drag strip. So we might not set the world record time, but this is real world testing. Let's see what it can do. sounds really good. There was a lot of wheel spin and true 0 60 came in at 7.74 seconds. That's very competitive with the Chevy Traverse or all the Subaru Ascents I've test driven. More than enough to haul your family around. Let's get to our final thoughts. Final thoughts of this 2023 CX-9. Is it worth buying or is it worth waiting until the 2024 CX-90 comes out? Those look like a really cool vehicle. But this you have available to you right now. Something that you can purchase, something that you can buy, and even under MSRP if you go to a good dealer. These are really cool. Mazdas in general feel really sporty, really refined. And overall, I've really enjoyed my time reviewing these, the CX-30s, the CX-5s, the Miatas. Any of the other Mazdas I've driven, I think they're really good. And the snowflake white metallic is a fantastic color. The trade-offs of this over something like the Traverse that I've reviewed or the Ascents is you don't have quite as much cargo capacity, but the power, the power output is fairly similar overall. And just look how good these are. It's just a bigger CX-5, which has sold millions globally. And for good reason. If you guys like my video, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Otherwise, I'll leave this in the link below, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.